forces of horror, the demons of your mind crowd in on you to destroy you. I think we can all agree that movies can offer us more than just entertainment. Every now and then you might leave the theater having learned a thing or two, or perhaps changed the way you thought about something or someone. This influence can maybe spark an interest, bring awareness to certain issues, or inspire you to make a difference. That's what I love about movies, and hence why I wanted to start a new series focusing on those kinds of movies. My name is Mike, and this is Impactful Pictures. You look back at your childhood and the movies or TV shows you grew up watching. What comes to mind? I'm sure a lot of you will be listing various Disney titles or perhaps Saturday morning cartoons from Cartoon Network. Maybe Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball, maybe some Studio Ghibli. It doesn't matter. The point is, we often remember the movies and TV shows that impacted us in some form or way. I know that sounds super obvious, but please bear with me. The real question is, how and why did they impact us? What do you remember? Is it the sounds? The songs? The visuals? The colors? The story? The concept? The thought? And how did it make you feel? Disney's Lion King, for example, is one of those unanimously proclaimed classic childhood movies that a lot of us grew up watching. I was never really a fan of it, but I could see why a lot of us remember watching it. Yes, the movie was well animated, and had a great story. And yes, I'm not afraid to admit, the songs were pretty good too. But I do think one of the main reasons why the movie affected so many of us as kids was due to, spoiler alert, the tragic death of Simba's dad. The thought of suddenly losing your own father was a scary thought for many, let alone for little kids watching it for the first time. I haven't seen Lion King in over 10 years, but I can still remember the specific scene. The silence that arose after Mufasa fell to his death. The soft yet dramatic use of Hans Zimmer's score. The use of desaturated colors, probably to emphasize a sense of hopelessness and emptiness. The look on Simba's face as he realizes what had happened. Anyways, we remember that scene so vividly because of the emotional exchange we had with it. In simpler terms, a lot of us teared up watching that scene. I know I could make a long list of movies that left such a strong impression on me, but I think I'll keep that for future videos. As shown on the title of this episode, I wanted to focus on another animated feature. One that has affected me so profoundly as a kid, I could almost say, it traumatized me. Adashi no Gen, or Barefoot Gen, is a Japanese animated feature from 1983 about the Hiroshima bombing. And let me tell you, I've never seen anything like it before. Now I know what you're thinking. Why the heck would you watch something like that as a kid? Well, I didn't purposefully sit down in front of the TV and ask my mom to put on my favorite Hiroshima movie. No, I came across this powerful anti-war movie when I was five. We went to this Red Cross museum where they were having this special exhibition about World War II or the atomic bomb or, or something like that. While meandering through this incomprehensible adult stuff, my friends and I were tirelessly looking for something interesting to look at. Naturally, as little kids, we were immediately drawn to this kid-friendly looking cartoon playing on one of the screens. Obviously, we had no idea the kind of horrors and grotesque imageries that we were about to witness. To illustrate the destructive capabilities of the atomic bomb, the museum played, on repeat, this 10-minute sequence from an anime which basically showed the city of Hiroshima being completely wiped out. They showed everything. Images I don't think I should have seen at the time, but I couldn't keep my eyes away from it. I clearly remember the buzzing sound of the bomb being dropped. The hellish sounding sirens leading up to it. The 
bright white light that arose upon impact. A naturally, slow-mo sequence of civilians burning, melting, their bodies dismembering. A sequence which I will not be showing because I do not want to traumatize my younger viewers. While I was too young to understand what was happening on screen, I clearly felt a very heavy and uneasy atmosphere being formed around this exhibition. Something I never felt around any other animated movie or TV show, no matter how sad or dark it got. Clearly, I knew this movie was about something bigger, something way more serious. Weirdly enough, I never knew the name of the movie, nor did I ever attempt to go looking for it. It was only a couple years ago that I accidentally stumbled upon this traumatic piece of cinema. I honestly hesitated a good deal before I decided to press on play. Upon rewatching a good portion of the movie, and yes, I purposefully did not watch the movie in its entirety, I came to the same harrowing conclusion as 20 years prior. It still is disturbing. Only this time I actually knew about the events being depicted, and was thus more troubled by the imagery and sounds. Barefoot Gen, or Hadashi no Gen, started off as a Japanese manga series in 1973 by the author Keiji Nakazawa. Gen's story in the manga was loosely based on Keiji's own experiences as a Hiroshima survivor. Most of the images seen in the manga or anime are based on things that the author had seen or heard himself. Once I found that out, I finally understood why those images stuck with me all these years. This wasn't made up. This was real. The manga series saw several live action adaptations before being translated into an animated feature in 1983. As much as the title implies it, I never really perceived the movie as a biographical retelling of one person's story, rather as an overview of the entire event. As an adult, having studied film and watched numerous animated features over the years, I was surprised by how simplistic the art style was. The characters and backgrounds did not carry the same kind of quality or sophistication that you'd expect from, let's say, a Studio Ghibli film or an animated feature from Disney. Yet here it was. This powerful piece of cinema that most people have never even heard of it carried more weight and meaning than most animated movies out there. The execution of the bombing sequence is truly masterful, with its almost expressionistic images and sounds. This here was a definitive example of how an animated movie can be just as powerful as any live action movie out there. And in some cases, even more so. Trust me, if you ever happen to watch this movie, get ready for it. Yes, they could probably remake a live-action version of this movie, and they kind of did, but why would you? The original one created, in my opinion, one of the most impactful images in cinema, and served as an important reminder of the atrocities committed during war. A lesson we all need to learn from. And hopefully... Never forget.